Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm continuing a series where I discuss the exact entries and exits I take as I trade throughout the day using a combination of smart money concepts, volume price analysis, and market maker positioning data. Before we get started, I'll leave several discount codes for trading services I use in the description, including Sonar Labs, TradeEdix, and Elite Trader Funding. Lastly, if you enjoy this content, don't forget to like and subscribe to help me grow this channel. With all that being said, let's get right into it. So today, I'm going to be continuing on from what we discussed and on my prior video, which was uh, trade setups that I take. And we can see here that I, I've crossed out multi time frame order blocks because that's what we discussed in the last video. I highly recommend you go check that out because what I'm going to show in this video can, can be can be combined with those concepts from the last video. Uh, as always, candlesticks and volume will be used with all entries and exits in particular for entry confirmation and also to get an idea of when to get out when we see things like stopping volume and long wicks. Uh, high volume node ledges and value areas and POC will be what we're discussing today. And then after that, we'll get into how I also use VWAP and gamma levels, trade at dealer diary. And then we'll talk about some swing trading concepts later on in this series. So keep in mind in this video, I'm not going in depth about in depth about market awareness, which is something we should always be paying attention to. We always want to have our finger on the pulse of the market. So we always want to look for upcoming market events, VIX, VXX or UVXI, UVXY, whichever you prefer, ADD, watching sectors, or if you're trading a, a holding of one of the main ET, uh, indexes or ETFs, watching that particular index or ETF to get an idea of what the market overall is doing. I like to use market net flow uh, through TradeEdix uh, to get an idea of overall market sentiment. And oftentimes flow can be a leading indicator. And then some people prefer to look at bonds, T-notes, treasury yields, tick, UVAL, DVAL, TVAL, things like that. I don't personally use those. I'm fine with VIX, ADD, sector awareness, and market net flow. Uh, however, those can also be used for market awareness. Now, I've done many videos on those concepts, so be sure to check those out if you're not sure of what I'm talking about here. The the This video is all gonna be centered around volume profile entry. So we're gonna be talking about high volume node regions, how we can enter off high volume node ledges and use low volume node volume gaps to, uh, to set our stop losses and profit taking. We always wanna look at higher time frame and prior day volume, volume profiles to get an idea of areas of interest. And the value area high, value area low, and point of control can also act as dynamic levels throughout the day. We can also reference those from prior days and they'll, they'll oftentimes act as levels. And they're very useful for market preparation and just int intraday trading as a whole. And when we're looking, when we're trading overnight sessions, so Asia and Euro sessions, or uh, or mean reversion days, sideways choppy days, volume profile can be incredibly powerful for trading flat markets, which I'll get into a bit. Now, the one thing we want to do is when we pull up volume profile, and I'll show in trading view how I have this configured here. I have the periodic volume profile set to one day. And these dotted lines, the green one is my value area low, the yellow dotted line is my POC, and the red dotted line is the value area high. Value area low and value area high, those I've done whole videos about the volume profile, so I won't go super in depth about this, but uh, those are the area where 70% of the, vol the volume for the day are conducted between, and then the POC is the area where the most amount of volume occurred. So we're typically fine, we'll typically find that price consolidates around those areas where the POC is at. And if the POC is shifting up, it's typically an indication that uh, that, that we're, we have some sort of bullish momentum that's pushing volume upwards, but shifting down, it can be an indica indication that volume is shifting downwards. And you can see, I picked this in particular because we can see how we had this period of consolidation, and this was on YM, however, this works on anything, where we had several flat days. So basically the range that these days traded in were, were it was all within the same range for pretty much one, two, three, four, five days before we finally broke out of this range at the bottom. And what I wanna point out is during this five days of consolidation, prior day value areas actually acted as levels. So you can see, I drew this red line here. So this actually lines up with the POC. So the trend day that led to this area of consolidation, turns out the market was essentially waiting for core PCE data to come out before making a decision that it wanted to sell off. Uh, however, during that period, we could see the POC on the day that brought us to this zone 
acted as the high for that entire time, which is very interesting. So this was a key level to mark. And I'll pull up in trading view how we can do that. And then you can see that the, the value area high of that same day was acted as the extreme high. And what this tells us is that as price moved into this zone created by this initial value area in POC, we could start looking for shorts during this period of time. So any one of these days as we approached the, this area, we could look, we, we could be confident that we're likely getting to the high of day and we want to look for reversals or mean reversions. And then when we get to the low of day, we could see here that this became a bottom, which was a significant break when this bottom did fall out. We can also see looking at prior day value area lows that as, as price, we did get some points of time where we consolidated underneath, but then we would push higher. Uh, but what's interesting about this is if you look at these in higher time frames, so this is why I am on the hourly, and then you mark them down and drop to lower time frames, you can see that they do act as key levels oftentimes. And so this is the point in time that I was referring to on, on YM. So if we go to the hourly chart here, and let me just make this a little bigger and zoom this out here, and I'll get rid of the visible range volume profile that I have on the right. That volume profile shows you the notable volume uh, for the, the price action that you're looking at at that point in time. And if I just hide my drawings here, which will come into play in a second, this is that point in time I was looking at. So we had this trend day, we have our value area POC from that area, and we could see if we mark this off during this point in time, and let me actually, I'll just, cause I can always re-add those drawings I have there. As we mark this off, we can see that this, this zone basically acted as these extreme highs on the day where we were going to get mean reversion. So we came in on a downtrend and then every time we tried to push back up into that zone, we get rejected. And even now, even now when we did actually fall below this value area low bottom, we did, we are coming back above it and notice how the value area lows are all within the same region. And now we're getting back up to that same area, that same notable area. So most likely, we'll see some sort of rejection out of this. Now, the thing is, if we break this zone, if we were to break it, come back and retest, this would be a fantastic play to take a, a, a long-term swing play, a long-term long or buying some call options or whatever it might be, because this is just such a notable area. And so it's important to use volume profile in the value areas to assess, assess where the volume has been overall historically using these higher time frames and just mark notable areas on your chart so you know as you approach these areas the same thing that i sort of showed with order blocks but not to this extent not not at this more higher level macro view as we get to these areas we know that we want to start looking to take certain types of plays so i will indeed be looking for shorts going into tomorrow especially as we uh push into this area up here or even tonight if uh, we could see we already sort of started rejecting off of that so we already started rejecting off the prior day value area high and so that's that's worth noting that would be a fantastic short position um so getting right back into the next thing that i want to talk about with volume profile would be volume gaps and ledges so these kind of act as dynamic support and resistance and we can see here on the visible range volume profile how we form these gaps so we have these high volume nodes so these nodes jutting out or high volume nodes this is where more volume is being conducted and then we have these gaps where it sorts of fall, falls off where I mark these gray rectangles. And we have this, then we have high volume nodes, we have a gap, high volume nodes, a larger gap. And we wanna be more concerned with the larger gaps because those are the areas where volume falls off, meaning that market participants will essentially stop participating. So you can see in this case, as price pushed up, and we, we actually got through a gap and we can see the same thing on the left with the periodic volume profile that whenever we retested that gap, things sort of slowed down and then we pushed higher. We also had this top gap that acted as the top. So essentially what this means is when we're, where we're trading within these high volume zones, we can actually take entry, we can take limit order entries at, at the end of one gap and then take exits at the next gap and use them as ways to trade these sideways markets or use them as ways to trade these consolidation zones. And this can be used on any time frame. I use this all the way from the one minute to take limit order scalps on futures all the way to what I was just showing on, on the hourly or four hour, hour for taking swing positions or, or holding a position for the day based on where these gaps are. Because 
these gaps tell us that market participants, big money has stepped out. So the millions of dollars that create these high volume nodes has stepped out and therefore will, will likely mean revert back into the high volume area. Now, that being said, they do break because markets are fractal and they do move. So we compare those with other things. We compare them with order blocks and other indicate and other indications of the market, just reading price action to get an idea of when they might break. When we see volume step out, step up, and we start seeing it push below, then, then it's sort of like bring your own volume. If you're going to get through these low volume nodes, you have to bring enough momentum and volume with you to push through them. Once we're through them, we cut through them like butter, a hot knife through butter, basically. But it does take momentum to get through them initially and then we can see how the rest of the time this was still very significant because every time we came up and tested this volume gap we rejected out of it so that's because there weren't buyers here this means buyers just fall off they're not around to continue pushes higher so this volume gap became a fantastic short area for us and the volume the volume profile does look different as we as it evolves throughout the day. And so one thing that's important is we talked about in the last video, looking at change of characters and only trading with trend or with character. And that's important because as price moves through, initially we see we're in this uptrend and we can use these volume gaps to take long positions off of. And they also usually do line up with an order block. Like this one does actually line up with an order block. We can take that up. Same deal here. This doesn't actually quite come down to the order block. Instead, we can use the volume gap to take a long position. But then once we get a topping pattern and we start to reverse and we get this change of character, now we want to do the exact opposite. We want to short off of these volume gaps. And we can see as a trend starts to form, this is more confirmation that we should only be looking for shorts whenever we're coming into these volume gaps and taking short entries as we go lower. So we always want to take entries with sentiment, unless it's a sideways choppy day or sideways choppy longer sustained sideways area do we never we don't really typically want to risk playing both sides we want to play with the trend that way when the volume gap does end up breaking when we do push through to the other side we want to make sure that we're on the right side of it and we're not triggering our stop but when you are playing these volume gaps one way you can do it for instance if after this fell through and we came up and retested this volume gap here you can put your stop loss on the other side of the volume gap. And therefore it means that it has to bring enough moment. The market needs to bring enough momentum with it to trigger your stop. So it's a good way you can use these volume gaps. And even if you're playing off of order blocks, you can use these volume gaps as a way to protect your stops, knowing that if the market's going to trigger your stop, it needs to bring a bunch of momentum with it. And it truly is more than more often than not an actual reversal. And you were just wrong on the direction uh, as opposed to, just having your stop set too tight and getting triggered uh, for, for unnecessarily. So as I mentioned, we can use it to scout, scout consolidation zones. So this is an area where we have this big high volume node area. And so basically every time we get to the edges of that high volume node area, we can take longs. And then every time we get to the other side, we can take shorts. And this is just an example showing that and I have this arrow down here because I want to show that it also, we do want to make sure we have confirmation. So when we see this pushing up, oftentimes it can make us think that we have momentum and we're going to be pushing through this low volume area. However, when we get this sort of candle here with this long wick on higher volume, this is a perfect opportunity to market short in. If you didn't already limit in, would have been a perfect opportunity to take, take a market short because this is what we call stopping volume where we see it with this kind of wick and we're rejecting out of a normally low volume area. All of a sudden this high volume comes in pushing us down. That's an indication that, that we are indeed gonna be pushed back in towards the high volume zone where we're gonna chop around and ideally you hold into the next gap. Now there are a couple gaps here I marked the bottom one, but it, you could honestly also take profits at the gap here. What some, some do is take profits in the middle, especially if it's an area that has a POC. Then as we take play, we take, we open positions at the edges and then we take profits at the POC. Now in this case, this POC is a little high up. So if we're taking shorts, that's not, we're not going to secure a lot of profit there. However, if you were taking long entries, the POC would be a great target. You don't necessarily have to wait until you get to the volume gap. We can see the POC does line up with the highest volume node. So uh, what I love doing with volume profile is using it with order blocks. So, and I'm gonna get into that throughout these series, how the more 
things we combine when we're taking trade ent entries, the better our entries can be. And this is a perfect example of getting a sniper entry off of an order block thanks to volume profile. And what happens here is we are in a uptrend. So we have a bullish character and we see we create an order block in this zone. We push higher, we come back down, test that order block. We push higher, come back down, uh, push higher. And so every time we have this break of structure, so over here we have this previous break of structure, we push beyond that. This creates an order block. So we know that this candle is our order block candle. So we draw that zone all the way across. So we know if we come back into this order block, we're going to be looking for long entries. And what's beautiful about this order block and what we talked about yesterday is that it created fair volume gaps. So these long candles where there's no market auction happening are fair volume gaps. Fair volume gaps are an indication of very strong order blocks. These are the strongest order blocks that we always want to make sure we mark on our charts when we see fair volume gaps created. And basically what happens is as the market plays out and we start falling back down and we get this change of this bearish change of character. And what's really happening here is that we're filling this fair value gap. So the market auction theory is taking place. We're filling this fair value gap. Finally, we get into this bullish order block. Now this is a pretty big zone. So sometimes you might wonder, okay, where in this order block is the market going to react? And you can see here, we can use volume profile for that. And it more than likely will react at the ledges. And this ledge essentially right here juts out and then we have all this volume fall off right here. And so we can set limit orders at these ledges and preemptively take this position. And what I like to do is I like it when I get a reaction and then I like putting a limit order in somewhere within those wicks where I have a high volume node sticking out. But even then we did get a reaction over here. So we can put a limit order in on these ledges somewhere on these ledges and get a really optimal entry and be confident that uh, we that it's going to be difficult to get through the bottom of this order block because there's not market participants down here and volume profile tells us that and then once we take this entry we can see we actually go all the way up and shift character again to being bullish for an absolutely incredible entry so this is how you this is how i combine the two of these concepts every single day in my trading now, I do want to specify again, it works on any time frame. So this is why I am on the four hour and we can see here, I'm looking at a monthly volume profile and we can draw these volume gaps to get an idea of where price will react and where, where volume falls off historically tends to always play out in the future. And these would be considered monthly value areas, monthly value area high, monthly value area low and POC. And if we just flip back over to the trading view chart uh, just to show how you can use that periodic volume profile so if we let me just remove my drawings here and if we go to the four hour chart on ym and right now this is looking at the daily volume periodic volume profile so i'm going to change it here and i'm going to set this to weekly or monthly it's worth noting that both think or swim think or swim and um trade abate support the same functionality uh, you just need to make sure that you have market data market data there so you can see enough this this tick data this volume data historically uh, so if we change that to month we can see that this volume profile became a lot bigger and now we can actually see okay where are my volume gaps and we can see this huge consolidation zone has created this this high volume nodes and we can be confident that it's going to take a lot the market is going to have to bring a lot of momentum. And this is what we were talking about area earlier when we were looking at the daily volume profiles. This zone right here is going to be difficult for the market to break above. If it does, we will actually be shifting into an uptrend. So therefore, until we get confirmation that we're going to not only break above it, but retest and stay above it, we want to be looking to take shorts off of this area. And we can actually take some really nice shorts off this and capture a lot of points here. And then the same is true. Now this is sort of the bottom. We might have to go back further in time. And I wouldn't actually be taking necessarily be taking uh, longs that I plan to hold for a sustained period of time here. Of course, it is okay to take longs, especially since we did have a nice bullish day here as we pushed higher. But the thing is, because we're in this overall downtrend, the market is overall bearish at this point in time for this month. Uh, just know that if you play off this, the lower 
gaps here, you you are taking a risk in that the market actually has a higher likelihood of falling out on you and triggering your stop loss. But we can continue marking these gaps. As you can see here, this volume gap is where we got we got some responses from the market. We had it hold here once it once it broke through it rejected off of it. It actually did break it through it again. And then finally we had our final rejection out of this same uh, volume gap here. I'm just making sure I drag this to match the ledges over here on the left hand side. The the same thing. So you can always mark these volume gaps. We have another big volume gap here. So we can see this is that we were trading in between this zone at this at this consolidation point before we did. And this is what I'm talking about. We're in a downtrend and we end up falling through this volume gap. We can see we end up retesting this volume gap before we end up falling further, at which point we have now created this zone. And at this point, I'm going to be favoring a hold of this volume gap to go lower and breaking out of this bottom volume gap. And it does seem to be happening because we can see here we did, even though we did come back up, we did create a new low. So, and also this move higher is also happening on diminishing volume, which kind of, which can indicate that it's a, a, a we, that the move is essentially losing momentum. It's going to have to bring more volume with it in order to get through this gap. So that's how we can use this on the higher time frames to plot out optimal entry exits when you're taking swing positions. It doesn't have to be on the four hour, it can also be on the daily or the weekly or whatever you like. And this is where I really like turning on the visible range volume profile because even if we turn off the periodic volume profiles, now we can see all of this volume and white one nice profile for us to help us plan our optimal entries and exits as we want to look at swing plays that we want to take. So we can say, okay, as and we can see here in the grand scheme of things, this new high volume area that was created in reality isn't that big compared to the amount of volume that we've seen traded in these other areas and but we can use this to our advantage to plan out our trades and we we never want to be taking shorts when we're at the bottom here we want to wait until we get into other uh, volume gaps where we can take take short entries to play continuations or use them in conjunction with order blocks like I discussed in my last video. When you have volume ledges and order blocks combined, that's where you're gonna be getting your best, very best entries. So that is how that works. So just to recap some tips here and then we'll close this up. Uh, so you can mix higher time frame and lower time frame for optimal entries. Uh, you can use, you wanna always make sure, and this is for everything I talk about, candles and volume are there for confirmation. So when we see hammers, shooting stars, spinning tops, engulfing candles, dojis on high or ultra high volume relative to the prior candles, they act as perfect entry confirmation. Uh, we wanna make sure that we use limit orders when we're playing these ledges. So when we see these ledges sticking out right before our volume gap, those are a great place to put limit orders and our stops can be naturally at the other side of that volume gap. In trending markets, we only wanna trade with the character or sentiment. This doesn't apply necessarily to sideways markets, although it can, but we, we always wanna make sure that we are dealing with trends. So we wanna take shorts when the markets has bearish sentiment and longs when it has bullish sentiment. And you can have bullish sentiment on a five minute chart and bearish sentiment on a four hour chart. So you wanna make sure that you consider the time frame when you're looking at the gaps that you're playing. Uh, always combine. Um, and then of course in sideways markets, what I love doing overnight is playing between the value areas. Oftentimes we'll see the market fluctuate between value area high and value area low. And I just use order blocks. So if we're at the value area low and we're pushing above it, I'll play every order block on the way up to the value area high, at which point I look for reversals and change my sentiment once I get that confirmation. Um, and you can take profits at the POC. You can also take entries off the POC at times. And then we want to co combine those order blocks just leads to getting absolute sniper entries and just make sure that you always review the prior day and week. Use this as part of your, your preparation to identify the high volume nodes, low volume node areas and think about where you can expect smart money to be involved at and where they're likely not be involved at. And we want to make sure that we're trading with smart money. So hopefully you found this helpful. Uh, this was part two of the series and I will be continuing part three very soon here. And I really appreciate you watching.